Sadhguru, you said that you are now out on this mobile journey of 10,000 miles on discovering what you call spiritual America, right? Would you like to tell us the difference between the spirituality in America and spirituality in India? It'll be very interesting. I'm sure it'll come brilliantly, but we're really waiting to hear from you. Hi, Kiran. Uh, as you know, these people, the indigenous people of this land, also got labeled as Indians. <laughs> so, one thing is I'm the real Indian. Their identity was a mistake. But the Indian spiritual process is highly sophisticated. We've had enormous amount of time to dwell upon and evolve various systems. We build structures to enclose human experience in different ways. The alchemical processes of India are unparalleled, but there is a sophistication, there is a complexity, and because of this sophistication and complexity, over a period of time, from generation to gener generation, there uh, naturally are distortions, use and abuse of variety of… variety of things have happened. Uh, here, the Native American spirituality, I want you to imagine this. Let's say, even a few hundred uh, years ago, this is a wide open country. So, when men and women just sat gazing at open plains, which runs for hundreds of miles, without any interruption from anywhere, simply sitting there and gazing at the land, well, initially, of course, their local troubles and problems will uh, play in their minds, but if you keep gazing at the terrain, slowly you become quiet and silent, and you start listening. Listening to every different dimension of life, as in yoga, we have this process that if you bring your body to a place where the inner reverbs are reduced to the minimum, we talk… Th talk about this in terms of breath. If uh, normally it is fifteen, if it becomes twelve, we will know the language of the animals. If it becomes nine, then uh, you will know the language uh, of the earth itself. If you know if it becomes six, you will know the language of uh, elements. And if it becomes three, you will know the very language of cosmos. Not by controlling your breath, but by bringing the body to that level of lack of resistance within itself. And uh, this is one way of putting it, that in the body there is nothing else, there is nothing else which is disturbing your perception. So when people simply gaze at the terrain, at the land, this naturally happens. I've spent many years in that mode <laughs> So, you know, I'm an unproductive life, I did not start a factory or something because uh, I basically spend time drinking in life and in many ways, that's what this is about. As you have heard, uh, always Native American people talked about, uh, it's blowing in the wind. Where is the truth? Where is the realization? Where is the perception? It's blowing in the wind. Well, if it's blowing in the wind, how else to do it but a motorcycle? Here I am <laughs>